day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. Hey, look. You know, I want to be able to, to talk about the importance of knowing who you are and knowing that you are known by your fruit. What fruit I'm talking about? I'm talking about the characteristics of the Holy Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such tears the law. And, and why is it important to do that? Because if a tree is known by its fruit, it's not only known by people, it's known by God. And therefore, you want to bear fruit, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, by what God is talking about to you. So what we're going to talk about today is to go ahead and understand a tree is known by its fruit, and if you want to say that you're a Christian, check your fruit because it's not a game. Hey, it's not a game. But you know what? It's not, it's not bad too. Christ said, my burdens are easy, my yokes are light. <laughs> we want to sit there and try to put this, this worldly thing and, and this, the, the cares of this world and the things of mindful man into our life to give us a miserable life. Opposed to walking by faith, not by sight. All right, so what I want you to do is let's get ready to hear this message and I'll get back with you on the next time. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. Hey, I hope everybody been. Uh, having a great weekend and this is a memorial weekend that's coming up and so I, I pray that uh, we honor and remember those people who have uh, given their lives to this country uh, and you know I think in this case sometimes Memorial Day is also that's coming up uh, tomorrow also for uh, not only the fallen soldiers that have died on the battlefield in defense for this nation. I think we also should uh, honor and, and for Memorial Day, the, the first, like, I would call it the first responders uh, in the hospitals uh, as they deal with and, and try to save lives of people uh, <laughs> over this, across the, Across this country and throughout the world, uh, they put their lives on, on on the line. Police officers as well. That there are really good police officers out there, and, and uh, they put their life on the line as well. It, and in, in everything, in all things, it's not just the it's in our in our professions of those things. Uh, there's going to be some bad people. There's bad people. Uh, it's just man, you know, the nature of mankind. You're going to have some, you're going to have some bad doctors, you're going to have some bad nurses, you're going to have some bad uh, first responders, you're going to have some bad soldiers, or military people. But in essence, the majority of them, we want to be able to say we honor them. Uh, and I, so Memorial Day, honor those people uh, that sacrifice or gave the ultimate sacrifice for this country and for you, towards you. And also, the next level, I think, is honor those who we have loved and have moved on uh, to another uh, realm of reality. And in this case, for all of us as believers, absence of the body is present with the Lord. So you talk about the fact of parents who, who actually spend their life dedicated to raise you, raise me, and, 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 and done all the things that they need, that wanted to do or tried to do to the best of their ability. Uh, <laughs> honor them too. 
all our friends and all those others who, who we've known have now passed on. This is a day of, the coming up for Memorial Day is a day of reflection. Uh, so we, we, should, we all should do that and just understand and our faith, and our faith, we're believing and trusting that they have moved on into uh, glory, uh, into heaven with our Father in heaven. And, and the fact is that our Savior, Yeshua, uh, Jesus, uh, has given them, opened that bridge to allow them to go to the Father go to heaven and i like what christ said i'll go prepare a mansion for you for me for those who we're going to honor uh for memorial day a mansion is prepared for them they're there in their mansion they're in their their uh place of dwelling in heaven that was prepared for them you know and in the actuality, it's prepared for us. So it, it just reflect on that and just have that faith that our loved ones are in the hands of the Lord uh, because they made that quality decision. And our God is a just God. So and a merciful God. You know, that's the thing I like about the, the gospel in itself too. Our God is a merciful God. <laughs> And and I even want to be able to talk today about the fact is we as believers, even those of you who are not believers, but I can only apply these things to the believer, to, to those who subscribe to the gospel of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua. You know, and I say Yeshua, just to make sure you understand that we're talking about our savior, our deliverer, our redeemer. That's who, that's, that's our, that's what Yeshua means. That's our salvation. God save. Amen. Uh, and, and, and with that in mind, I just want to be and reflect uh, this Sunday morning is listen. We as believers, please get this in our heart. See, you've been called, we've been called to go preach the good news. Okay, that's what we've been called to do. And, and what has happened sometimes, I'm not saying across the board, but in many cases, the things that even perpetuates uh, uh, the different divisions that, that happens in, 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 in this world, in the countries, is that we, we, we want to receive, if, if, if you're a believer, because that's what I think that's the whole point I want to make sure. <laughs> because like I said, I can only hold you accountable and me accountable of the word of God that we have received, right? When once you, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, this is one of the foundational scriptures that said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, with the heart, and with confession unto salvation. So what we're saying is if you, you confess that Jesus, Yeshua, is your personal Lord and Savior, you're saying is I am submitting my life, my will, my strength, my, my ability to him. You, you're starting to say, I'm moving myself as Lord over my life and letting Christ be Lord over my life. Let Christ be the head of my life, right? That, that's, that's what we, 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 we strive to do. That's what, that's what it's all about. Uh, and the fact is, I like the fact is that if, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, meaning move you off the throne of your life and let him be in the throne of your life, I want you to first understand is, it's not, we're not telling you to let your, uh, a pastor, your mama, your daddy, uh, your sisters, your brothers, your friends, your ministry, be Lord over your life. It is Christ. Now, I know some people want to, be you know some ministries and everything else want to be lord of your life 
because I think they they want to be loaded life. So I guess I, I hate to say it, so they can have uh, authority. Uh, some of them doing it because they they want your money. You know, I heard somebody last night who was talking about the fact that they want to see you got you got ministers out there say I need to see your uh, LES, and we we know that a lot of people do that. Uh, because they want to see how you're giving the appropriate ties to correspond with your, your paycheck. Uh, and th those are the type of things that sometimes ruffle feathers of people because it's like, I thought I was to be able to freely give. And then someone said, no, you need to give the first fruit. And they refer back basically to the Old Testament of, of how the, the ministry uh, relied on the tent, the tithe to go to the priests and the Levites because they wanted them to spend more time uh, taking care of the ministry. And, and, and that is the means uh, for even modern day ministries where you do, you pay, uh, you give to the ministry in order for that ministry to be successful uh, and have all the resources it need to do the work of the ministry. But I just, but the whole point people need to remember I want all of us to remember you, the, the fivefold gift ministries is to equip you, equip me, equip us to do the work of the ministry. So you are you are part of the ministry. And so your resources, because we don't have priests anymore. You know, I know the Catholic Church have it, but I'm just saying is the, the old Levitical times and the Levites, <laughs> we don't have them serving as priests in all the Christian ministry. They, 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 they have rabbis and the teachers in, in, in the uh, current Hebrew or uh, Jewish community. But for us, we don't have priests. We have ministry. We have the fivefold gift ministries. But the whole purpose of those ministries is to equip you as a believer to do the work of the ministry, because I'm gonna tell you, the most important work of the ministry is out in your home, in your job, in your in the world that you face. Because take it, believe it or not, we need all of you as ministers of the gospel to reach out and touch the lives and everyday lives of people out there. We don't need you to be in agreement. So sometimes some ministries, sometimes uh, hands are tied because they're trying to bring people in to 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 continue to sustain the ministry. And I, I mean, look at you, some of those facilities, some of the bigger ones, the mega ministry, you talk about those facilities cost thousands, not millions of dollars to operate. And some people really get, they, they you know, you got people flocking to different ministries today because of the, them sometimes not echoing the the gospel, but the rhetoric that divides us in our country. Uh, and, and I want to be able to talk about that today, this morning. Yes, the fact is that you really do need to get to this point where we start to stop dividing and, and, and using rhetoric and even racist comments to our children and to one another. What I'm saying is when you, when how many times uh, a, a, a white racist or even a black racist, they will go to their prospective groups of people, especially behind closed doors and spout racist comments. You know, they'll sit there and say, well, black people are this, they always do that. They, 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 they and, and, and put them all in a group, right? In other words, you will say negative connotations about somebody, about a group of people based on the sole purpose of the color of skin and said, that's how they are. And you can't trust them or whatever. And then, they, and then you raise it, to, you say it to each other, you echo it again behind closed doors. And then you echo it, uh, uh, whether in closed doors or in, in group settings or social settings, <laughs> you, 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 what are you doing is continue to, to reinforce 
negative connotation just for the sole purpose of the color of skin. Same thing if I was white. You sit there and somebody sit there and talk about white people. Say white people is this. They always blah, blah, blah. That, you know, all the negative connotations. And all that does is just continue to perpetuate a lie, a division, and hate. You know, do, we need to understand that many people uh, that are raised to hear that rhetoric have the tendency to act on those things. You know, I mean, even talk about when you talk about uh, racism with, with, with Blacks, uh, with those who were brought here as slaves. And the fact is that even on the ships that they were bought in, brought in, they uh, bought in, they were, they were uh, abused. Uh, if y'all seen the, the history about how slave ships were, they packed people in, human beings, as, as, as commodity uh, on top of one another. And, and you know, they don't, sometimes you don't do that with animals, but they, they did when they had people had the feces and all that other stuff, just drilling them down on one another. If you're at the bottom, oh God, you got all of it. Uh, <laughs> and some of, the, some of the, the ladies were, and who knows, maybe it's on the men too, for some of the people based on their orientation, uh, rape some of the people on the ships during the voyage just took turns. Oh, they, they do their job during the daytime and, and uh, go in there and, 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 and rape uh, a person, a human being against their will. They was also captured against their will. And then throughout history of that time of, of slavery, the people, they, they, was not, they were the rhetoric, I'm trying to say, uh, saying they're savage and they're they're uh, they're they're just inhuman and 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 and, and all, you know just dehumanize and then allow those immoral things to be done to them after you gave them that label and gave them that group that title and 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 then you just did all kinds of bad things to the people then after the uh slavery then you still go into the jim crow laws and all that stuff and 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 perpetuated by telling your children raising your children you and then the question of what you do it yourself raising them to, to start thinking of dehumanizing people for the whole sole purpose of abusing somebody and and i said again i said before is that is is wrong for you or wrong for me to uh, dehumanize people as a group. It's wrong for me, wrong for you to demonize individuals and try to label individuals, because that's what happens, right? You just label people, and then you sit there and, and justify doing bad things or hating people. And I'm trying to say that, you know, you still, we all still got to answer to God. Regardless of how we sit there and think we're doing right, you know you're doing wrong. We know we're doing wrong, and we need to stop that. So now, with that in mind, let's talk about not so much about the color of skin and, and the visions that we use to, to hurt one another. We know we got to stay also with political parties, right? But this piece I want. Even the other division was they have in our ministries. And some, I'm not, see, nothing's wrong with it across the board. But let's talk about the ones that is, is common. And the fact is that I call it legalism. What I mean by legalism is that we, we imply the law on people, young, especially young people. That's why we, some of y'all don't understand, some people don't go to church, stop going to church, uh, or leave the church because of legalism that we apply on people uh we we and, and we we feel that it's it's, it's we take it more high ground to 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 legalize or put legalism on people so that they can sit there and and uh uh so you can sit there and do bad things and people have done bad things to people based on our legalism in other words people have appointed themselves as the wrath of God, or we ostracize people because they don't line up to what we think is the right thing for them to do. 
we 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 so we 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 demonize one another. We we sit there and I mean, come on, we we got people sit there and they mad because you go to church on Saturday or you go to church on Sunday. We talk about people that sit there and mad at you or condemn you and because you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then somebody said, no, you got a name in the name of Jesus for baptism. Uh, there's people that sit there and, 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 and just continue to, to show the and then, yeah, I mean, some of anger and ostracize people. You got people that sit there and say, well, you, you got to, your church has to be in Christ, meaning that sounds right, except for when they talk about this. No, the title of the church needs to be in Christ. And now we, you, you, you are now being demonized because you ain't got it. Or you got people to sit there and say, if you don't preach the cross, you got to, what I'm talking about with the preach the cross is you, if you don't talk about Jesus, Yeshua dying on the cross, being buried and being raised again, uh, you didn't preach. So they say, you, you don't got it. You got people to sit there and condemn people because you don't use the old, I mean, the King James Bible. You know, I mean, they get offended. Oh, you didn't use the King James Bible. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with you. You know, uh, those, those, those are the type of things that we, we as believers, uh, create divisions among ourselves. And there's plenty more. I know y'all know that, right? And based on all your Methodists, all your Baptists, uh, all you uh, <laughs> Angelical or, or, or any, any of the types of denominations out there. Uh, if you, you're not part of my church, then you're not saved, you know, and, and all that stuff creates division and it also rubs people away. And I'm sitting there saying, let's, let's, let's move away from legalism and start talking about the, the, the gospel, the power of the gospel. If you want someone to change, see, that's what you don't, sometimes people don't like that, they don't believe it. You want someone to change. <laughs> you believe in, in the gospel and believe in God, that he, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power and the anointing of one person of receiving Christ is Lord, the power of God Almighty to change people, then, then you're going to always, that's when you're going to always create these legalistic divisions of, from between one another, putting people down, don't forgive people, that's a big one uh, that a lot of people don't think about, they don't want to forgive, and you have to forgive because that's what that's what we're called to do. Forgiveness is not for the person, it's for you. That's that's what that's about. So <laughs> I want I want to briefly uh, talk this morning. I, guess what? I'm on the road. I'm traveling, and I'm gonna try. I'm headed back today. Um, is to keep. Let's learn to to love one another and let each person not collectively as group that's because of pace based on the color skin because you got people right now that's that that's panicking about losing their majority status you i mean you literally there's people panicking about that because some of them thinking that what was treated by other how other minorities were treated by uh the majority group that they they feel that once they become a minority the people are going to do it to them and, and, and that's what we need to sit there and say, why don't we, whether you're minority or majority, or whether you're shrinking minority, I mean majority to a minority, uh, and those who are growing as a majority, uh, why don't we, especially the body of Christ, is to start allowing ourselves to be able to show that we, I'm not going to be like the the those who abuse their power or their majority status or their minority status, you know, or any status. In other words, is wrong. We as believers show the world. It's, we don't we don't do abuse. We, you know, the Bible says in in, in Matthew's twelve thirty three. 
that a tree is known by its fruit. It says is either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt because a tree is known by its fruit. His fruit, each individual, you, how are you known? See, we know if we sit there and try to put people from a collective group, then we know that uh, the, the fruits in our history, if you wanna talk about the majority, the, the a lot of cases we forget about the fruit we don't, or we don't, we want to hide the fruits when we talk about the rape, we talk about the murder, we talk about the abuse that was done. If, if we go by the, the uh, people as a group, then the known fruit of the past shows a lot of, a lot of bad things. And that means uh, does that group all be bad because of the history the showing the negative things that happen. Do, do, do we do that? If we go by groups, I, I like I was saying this, especially the groups, if, you, if you're white and you've been taught to talk about minorities in a negative term, go back to fruits that was bad for the history of the past and tell you what, what makes those people. And then some people gonna sit there and say, well, those acts was because they were justified. <laughs> and we know that that's not true, right? You know, there's no justification for you now to be a murderer. So we got people right now, we were talking yesterday about the fact of abortion, and we call it murder. But we don't talk about the murder of grown people, people that's alive. What about those murders? Because thou shalt not murder. You shouldn't be, nobody should have been murdering uh, people that were uh, brought to this country uh, by force raped, killed and thrown over ships. We don't talk about, we should, the murder. What about the murder of, of people unarmed by the police? What about murder where people that was lynched? And what about the abuse of how the people, some people were lynched? You're talking about people with hands, fingers were cut off. People with toes were cut off. People with private parts were cut off. People were burnt alive. People then it was lynch. I mean, they're already dead. I guess unless you unless they're still alive, while you burnt them, and then and then they just, just die slowly. And then you still put them on a rope and and and, and lynch them. What, what about those fruits? Where's the justification for anybody to do that? And, and it's, it's not just just people that did slavery. The people who were back in the dark ages, uh, Europeans were doing that to themselves a lot hanging and, and, and burning people alive. You remember that movie called Braveheart, where you actually had the, the where they demonstrated that they, they used to take people's guts and, and pull it out while the person was alive. And, 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 and uh, they put them in cages and leave them up in the cages for, for days. A lot of them die from starvation and no water. Uh, Remember the people who used to put in the stocks and then they put in the middle of town. They put them in stocks where they stocks made this block, right? They they got the head in the in in the, in the wood, and then they got the arms, their hands this way, and they got to stay covering up so they can't can't take the head out, they can't take their hands out, and and the people will stand in there, keep them there for days in the middle of town. Uh, some people sit there and go and throw bricks and. Uh, vegetables at them, you know, just to humiliate the person. <laughs> you saw the game was thrown, thrown the, 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 uh, where the lady was just humiliated and they walked through town naked, you know? Uh, I mean, it was like all the type of things. And then the Salem witch hunt where the people were accused, just all you have to do is somebody accuse them and then they were burnt alive or thrown to water, see if they float, if they float. They're witches. They they seek. Then they want a witch, and 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 either way, they're dead. But that's what man has done. This is what this is our history that we have done. And and the fact is that a tree is known by its fruit. And if we put there collectively that we all did it, and I'm trying to say talk about the people in the past, our ancestors, <laughs> or we talk about people today. 
you know? It's, a tree is known by its fruit. What, and God is gonna judge each and every individual by his fruit, either you good fruit or you corrupt fruit. And, and then corrupt believers, and then sit there and wanna judge one another, put one another down. Those are ones I wanna talk about today. And I wanna sit there and tell you that really, I'm, uh, as believers, we have to love one another. You know, that's that's a commandment of Christ. Whether you like it, well, you know, I don't care whether you like it or not. It's not I don't care what I like it or not. Christ gave the commandment. In John 13, 34, new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35 said that men will know that you are my disciple for the love that you have for one another. And yet we still go, when people see us backbiting, putting ourselves down, one another down, they said, look, they said, this is, a, this is what a Christian is. Because a tree is known by his fruit. Listen, a tree is known by his fruit. What fruit are you bearing, believers? Because you are known by those fruit. And if you want to do, you want to continue to talk about and judge people, behind the doors, raising your children behind the doors about the, uh, the negative connotation that you put on people, then that's all you're going to have from generation to generation, not understanding that a tree is known by his fruit and God will judge just based on the fruit that we bear. What fruit found in Galatians? 5 22 to 23 then the fruit of the spirit is love and joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law that is the fruit that we are supposed to bear so when you talk about people behind their backs condemning them or even get to the space that we're actually doing some negative things to people, then you need to understand the tree is known by its fruits and God will judge each of us individually by the fruits that we bear. So we have to bear good fruit because that's what he wants us to do. You know, I think, matter of fact, I probably can show you the, the, some people say, well, what kind of fruit I supposed to be to, 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 to bear? And I, I maybe need to go ahead and show the good fruit and the corrupt fruit so that many of us won't get uh, uh, confused <laughs> uh, about the difference between uh, good fruit and bad fruit. You know, maybe we need to make sure you, you know that. So let me see if I can bring that up with the... Uh, uh, with the Esau Bible that I got. <laughs> Let's show that real quick. Uh, if, if you can see the in the uh, scriptures here, this, this is for all of us, because we really need to get to the point of knowing we got to bear good fruit. Um, it's in, found in Galatians. I did 22, 23, but I'm going to start at the uh, top there. It says in uh, verse 16, and it says, keep in step with the Spirit not in the steps of the world because the world and all the legalism and all that other stuff all it does is shows a vision and running people off and you are the work of the ministry the pulpit each of us have a a a, a platform to 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 preach the gospel all of us have been sent to go preach the gospel this in, in galatians 5 16 it says this i say then walk in the spirit you hear that? That's, that's being letting the Holy Spirit be on you, anoint you. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust is against the spirit. Listen to that. And th that S, that's a capital S, talking about the Holy Spirit. And you have your own spirit, right? Man is a spirit. Right, but let's go into the flesh lusts against the spirit, and really, I probably also talk about your spirit. We got the Holy Spirit, but it also resists 
your spirit, if your spirit is lined up with the Holy Spirit, which is what we want to do, right? So the flesh lusts against, so verse 16, this I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You see that? There's that the, the, and that's why I guess where a lot of cases people don't do the right thing because they allow their flesh to be the dominant instead of the spirit, your spirit being connected to the Holy Spirit. You're allowing your flesh to be the dominant factor because it says verse 18, <laughs> for if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. And that's what I'm trying to say when you're talking about believers and the fact of what believers are supposed to be. A believer is led by the spirit. They're not doing things that are against the law. They, they're walking in it. While you sit there and you play our political parties, we play in our different color skin, all these different, these isms and schisms that we allow ourselves to have division, when the fact is that we all walk, all I'm talking about all believers, we all walk in the spirit. We're not under the law. Listen, if you're in Christ, you're not under the law stop trying to we all keep trying to go back to the law and then apply it to one another instead of applying to yourself because did you not know the scripture said that he who offend in one point of the law even though if they do all things except for one part of the law they are guilty in all the laws and nobody's perfect I know you know some of us want to apply that and think that they, you know, it's the fact that you judge, we judge people and we're guilty of something ourselves. Get yourself together first before you start judging people. Get yourself together before you start ostracizing people. Get yourself together before you start kicking people out of the ministries. Get yourself together. <laughs> because trees don't buy fruit. And you know the fruits that you bear. All of us. And if we got some bad fruits on our trees, then we need to start operating and take care of those fruit that we bear as individuals instead of sitting there trying to condemn somebody. But say, like I said, verse 18, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19, look at it. This is, I'm going to, we're going to go from this to the end, but we're going to show the difference between corrupt fruit and good fruit. And all of you will agree with these scriptures because that it is it just shows you this about the character. This is some of the characters of the flesh that some of us even uh, show people, right? It said now the work, verse 19 said, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Look at this now: adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry witchcraft. Now, the ones that people have a tendency they can hide is idolatry. In other words, you 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 do this in the back of the booth in the corner of the dark, people don't see you. And even the people that get involved with witchcraft, they sit there and do that stuff. Not the, the ones that come out open, they do it openly, but there's some that do it in the back in the booth in the corner of the dark. Hatred, this is something that you can you 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 hide from people and you burn it up with hatred until you actually execute doing hateful things to people. But people did that. And I'm talking about those things in the past where hate gets to the point where you, you know, you kill somebody. And and that's that's across the board, regardless of what color your skin, what ethnic group you, you have, if you get to the point where your hate is so uncontrollable, you do something negative to sort to somebody. Uh, you got various, you got emulation, uh, you got wrath. Come on now. A lot of us sit there and think that they both to be the wrath of God. And, that is, and you show it. The strife, you sit there and you fight against each other because of different doctrines and, and uh, different different points of views that you have, even in ministry. These stripes comes up. Division comes up. Uh, you, you, know, you know, I talked about it earlier, different types of how we both worship. 
what kind of clothes that we wear, all those type of things. We bring in strife, sedition. We talk about the fact that even in January 6th, when the people sit there and attacked our government, some people said they said they was doing the, some people said they said no, they was doing the right thing. Some said they did a tour. But it's sedition when you try to overthrow your government. It's sedition, heresy. When you sit there and you 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 do contrary to what the gospel is all about. And, and they, those people, sometimes you, you gotta look at them and say, they're at least saying what some of us are saying behind the back and booth in the corner in the dark. We really gotta watch out for that. Look at this envy, there's another one. See if there are people, there's some people like to focus on the different variations saying, well, it's not murder, but it's, it's, it's the works of the flesh and the tree is known by its fruit and God will be, you will be judged by the fruits that you bear, either corrupt fruit or good fruit. Envy is one of, there's a lot of people that get be so envious that they set people to try to try to get people off track because they're jealous of, of what they're supposed to be able to do. It's envy. Look at murder. You got people, the Bible said he who hates his brother is a murderer and a murderer has no life about us in him. And yet we'll sit there and we'll hold on to, like we talked about that, we talked about yesterday about the abortion, but yet we don't talk about the hate. We don't sit there and talk about the unforgiveness. We don't sit there and talk about the fact is that murder, which is in the 10 commandments not to do, but we don't sit there and understand that hatred is murder. And you have no eternal life about it, you period. And you show hate. You hate the people that do abortion. You got the people who don't do abortion. You got pro-life, pro-choice. But you we get we get sucked up to this stuff and not understanding how it affects your spiritual, your salvation, your salvation. The Bible said for us to work out our own salvation. And <laughs> we started sitting there and allow the flesh to dominate our characteristics, our character, our nature, then that's that's what the enemies has the enemies say I want. Until we repent and line up with the will of God, not the things we're mindful of man, but the things that mindful of God. So you got you got this hatred, you got envy, and this verse 21, you got envy and murder. Look at it drunkenness you know we got people now the fact is well, we we try to get you out of sin so we don't want you to drink at all so now if you drink we got your sin opposed to the fact that scripture is talking about drunkenness you don't get you don't get a dui or you can't get a dui if you, you you're casual drinking but we don't made it say no see we want to kind of get you out of sin so we're going to make that a judgment we're going to start from the time you pick up a beer or pick up a wine or pick up a liquor, whatever you were talking. And we're going to now sit there and say, that's sin. But we, 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 we just go to this, we go too far, is what I'm saying. We, we try, to, try to create, raise a bar. And now the bar opposed to the word is what you want to judge people by, to have the vision. And you don't even level equal up to the bar yourself. You may be, you may, you may got this one area in the bar right, but you got these other areas of the things we just talked about: envy, murder, wrath, strife, sedition. You know, uh, revelry. You know, uh, you, those are things. Look at this say It's such like. So if you got that envy, you got that strife, you got sedition. We like it. We want to focus on adultery. We want to focus on fornication, but we don't. And we want to focus on murder. But we don't talk about the different levels of murder, murder in the heart, just like the adultery in the heart, right? We we talk about the we talk about there's a spiritual adultery, there's a spirit of fornication as well that we need to sit there and look at. And so for those who may be confused, not in the spirit, we're trying to say is that adultery is also having a relationship in the in the spirit against things contrary to God. Also, you're worshiping something else other than God, or you're trying to, you, you're not focused on the will of God, you're focused, I mean, I guess you have, to God, those are people that get involved with political platforms. They're actually doing something that's outside the will of God. You gotta, you gotta watch out for that. All right, 